earlier this morning, guys, this is where we're going to start our show. Our reporter covering the Milwaukee Bucks, Jamal Collier, he wrote a piece that's out on ESPN.com right now about Milwaukee's path back to contention. So in case you missed it, let's just catch everybody up here, right? Almost a year ago, the Bucks shook things up. They shook up the league when they acquired all-world point guard Damian Lillard in exchange for Drew Holiday. And then four days later, Drew went to the Celtics and eventually won another title. But a month after that big trade, Giannis agreed to a three-year, $175 million contract extension with Milwaukee. That extension actually begins next season and ties Giannis with the franchise through 2027-2027. He has that player option then. But then, yeah, some drama. Head coach Adrian Griffin, who was brought in to replace Mike Budenholzer at the beginning of the season, was fired just 43 games into his Bucks tenure. And then Doc Rivers was hired shortly after. But that didn't solve everything, right? The injuries they piled up for the Bucks. Giannis missed the entire series against the Pacers. And Lillard was also limited due to an Achilles injury. Let's take a listen here to Giannis Attentacupo. We're getting older. We're not getting any younger. But... Again, that doesn't mean that we cannot uh, still perform uh, on a, at a high level. Like I think Brooke was incredible. I think uh, Chris this series was incredible. You know, I think Dame, uh, when he played, he was incredible also. I think if I played, we would have been a different conversation right now. It's hard to say that, yeah, we're old and you have to make change because these guys are uh, very pissed. So that was Giannis after the Bucks were bounced in the first round for the second straight season. And then look at this. What's, well, what's, mm. what's happening here? <laughs> is, is, this, is this an exercise you do it's often, Bob? Pilates? Uh, this morning. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I figured you came straight yeah. to the yeah. You look extra Yeah, I know. Today, it's not that hard. <laughs> it looks hard. It's pretty this. easy. Pretty um, yeah, this is all of us are going to get on the Pilates yeah. machine after that. Right. Let's just take a look here at the Bucks' current depth chart. You have Dame's former Blazers teammate, Gary Trent Jr. That's the big addition, along with Torrey and Prince, DeLon Wright getting added. So this is what we're looking at for the Milwaukee Bucks. So now that all of us are all caught up, Zach, the Bucks, they didn't exactly have much flexibility this summer. They made a couple of moves that we just detailed. But do you believe that continuity is enough for them to get back to that promised land? Continuity won't be enough. And to me, this is the single biggest question in the NBA going into the season. Can the Bucks rediscover the form of a team you look at and say, that's a contender? That team can beat Boston four times in a playoff series. That team can beat the beefed-up Knicks four times in a playoff series. The Sixers with Paul George. All those teams either stayed the same or got better. Milwaukee is coming off the year from hell. And they still have Giannis. So I can't take them out of that tier with New York and Philly right behind Boston because he is that good. But the questions outweigh the answers right now. Damian Lillard is 34 and rarely looked comfortable last season. Chris Middleton is 33, coming off an injury-plagued season, a nice playoffs, and then double ankle surgery in the offseason. Brooke Lopez, the anchor of their defense, is 36. This team is getting older and less athletic around Giannis. They don't have a lot of young guys in the pipeline. This is a right-now team that went 17 and 19 under Doc Rivers before the Giannis injury took them out of the playoffs. They just never found their footing, and they've got to find it fast in an Eastern Conference that has gotten better top to bottom in the playoff race. Yeah, I like what Zach said. I mean, their questions are, are many for this team. And I, I, do, I do value continuity, maybe more than other people, uh, Malika Festus. Um, look at Dallas, right? Dallas didn't even make the play-in tournament. And they, everybody wrote them off, probably all of us. Kyrie and Luka doesn't work. Dallas tanked. Obviously got Derek Lively out of it, which we don't talk about enough. And then they got to the finals the following year. So we're very quick to dismiss things when they don't work right away. This team didn't have enough time to work together. But the problem with that then is, the counter is, why didn't they have enough time? Well, they were hurt. They fired their coach. No continuity, too much drama, too many questions. They still do have a top five player in this guy right here, Giannis Antetokounmpo. When you have a top five player, you always have a chance to win a championship. We can argue, what is Lillard? What is he, top 10, top 15? You have a top five guy, a top 15 guy, and then this guy, Middleton, is a consummate role guy, a champion in his own right. But I hate using this, but you have to be healthy, mm. right? You have to be healthy. Right. Every team has to be healthy. But when we talk about health, some teams have a better chance of being healthy than others. This team has had a lot of injuries, and you would not be surprised if they had more. Personally, I hope they don't. I want to see what this team looks like healthy because 
a healthy Bucks team yeah. for the course of the 24-25 season could do some damage, but have to be healthy during the regular season, develop that continuity, and then in the playoffs. The health is everything for them. I mean, Giannis has played three playoff games the last two years combined. Wow. The reason they've been out in the first round isn't because their organization is failing. It's because Giannis has been hurt. And if you go back even before that, when they lost in seven games in their title defense year against the Celtics, Chris Middleton got injured in the first round of that series and didn't play in that seven-game Celtics series. So, yes, I think it's dangerous to assume that they're going to be healthy, but I also think it's dangerous to disregard them. I think Zach is correct. They're under a lot of pressure to have a big season this year, but I do not think anything is impossible for this group. I think if they're all together and healthy, which is a big if, their ceiling is still championship-level high. And also, I do think that they've made some nice additions to their rotation. Gary Trent Jr. is one of the best value signings of the offseason. Uh, Torian Prince is a quality uh, rotation player. Uh, you know, they signed DeLon Wright, a quality rotation player. They did get deeper. They've got to be healthy, but they, I believe, are a better team than they were at the end of last season. Right. Always on the clock to be able to perform when you have a, a caliber player like that. But the fact of the matter is, under Doc Rivers, Chris Middleton, Dame Lillard, Giannis Antetokounmpo, we only saw them on the floor for eight games together. So now, Festus, that they have an offseason, all of them together, what can we expect from this duo of Dame and Giannis on the court? So last season, when I heard the news that Dame Lillard was going to the Milwaukee Bucks, especially after Drew Holiday was being traded, Traded, I thought this is an incredible move for the Milwaukee Bucks. You have a guy in Damian Lillard who can score the basketball like the best of them from range beyond, beyond the three-point line. And you have Giannis Antetokounmpo who comes into the game and he's, his tenacity just helps them win games. These guys together as leaders can lead this team to the Eastern Conference, at least the Eastern Conference Finals. But now I'm going to show you some tape of exactly what it is that I see okay. in the second year. Because I think they're going to be better, kind of like how you said, Bob. They're going to be better like the Dallas Mavericks. A lot of pick and rolls under Duck Rivers. You have Giannis and Tentacupo right here. The defense is going to be dropped back on Giannis, and the defense is going to be pushed up on Damian Lillard. This is perfect for Dame. Coming off a ball screen like that, all you have to do is nail the defender. Now you have a double screen right here. Bobby Portis, Giannis and Tentacupo. Great read by Giannis to slip this screen because you know the guy is going to be jumping trying to get to Dame because you don't want him to shoot that shot. These are the type of plays I feel like are going to be really crucial for this team. It's the reason why this team is going to be so great. But health is a huge factor for this team. Very front-loaded. Starting five is incredible. They try to boost the bench. But I think any injury offsets this team's chances. And I agree with that, Fences. When I saw it, I, love, I love Drew Holiday. I think we all love Drew Holiday. We knew what he was. We saw what he was in the finals. I did think, wow, how are you going to defend Lillard and out of the Kumpa? You, you literally can't. What I got concerned about, which we have to see, and we did see a little bit, I keep referencing the Mavericks with Luka and Kyrie. Last year with Lillard and Giannis, one plus one just equaled two. We needed to equal two and a half. We needed to equal three. Right. We did not see the best version of those guys. And maybe with the coaching change, you saw the numbers in the pick and roll. People would say Giannis is handling too much. Dame is handling too much. I don't think they even know how much they should be handling. Mm -hmm. Hopefully with time and an offseason. As a basketball fan, I love it when you see two players, two great players come together and better each other. I just didn't see that. It's, and I, I'm surprised we didn't see more of that. That's, that's my takeaway from last season. I think that's going to change this year. Well, let me ask you this, Bob. Coming in, it's easy to talk about stakes here on September 19th. But coming into the season, looking, we talked about when Giannis is under contract until, looking at, at Boston looming over this, this, this Milwaukee Bucks team as a superior team, what are the stakes here for Milwaukee? If you're, if you're John Horse looking at this roster, knowing exactly what he said, when Giannis, when you have him, you are always on the clock. I think if you're John John Horst, you're sitting there saying it's either this year and maybe next year. That's it. Okay. Our window is now and maybe one year. Age, injuries, all the above. And what you're hoping for is health, right? Because you can evaluate a team when you're healthy. We, when, when you got hurt in the playoffs for the worst, you can't really tell how good or not you are. Maybe we would have won the finals, seriously, in 16. You know, maybe we would have done this or that. But when you're healthy and you lose, you get clarity. Mm. They have no clarity. If I'm John Horst, I'm going – I want to be healthy going to the playoffs. I want to be healthy for the regular season. Then I will find out. Right. But we didn't get to see that. And when you're a GM, you don't see health. 
then you're left wondering, well, what if Giannis was healthy? And that's sure. the hardest thing. And we didn't get to see that. And most importantly, Giannis didn't get to see that. And he's going to need to if he's going to continue to buy into this. That's game. why he was doing Pilates. Formal. You saw that. Yeah. You see, saw the that's, I mean, we're Listen. going to break just so we can practice <laughs> that exact move. Still to come on NBA Today. I want to try to post what I look like.